viewers, wherever you're watching us from, we welcome you to this live broadcast. We want you to know that we value you, we love you, you are very important to us, and even you are very important to God, and therefore we would wish uh, to welcome you, and also request you to welcome your friend, share with your friend, invite people uh, to be blessed uh, together with us, even as we have a moment to praise the Lord and even share the word and have a good moment in his presence. We love you. You are good. You are good. Invite somebody to share. Welcome somebody so that we can be blessed together in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to praise the Lord and before we praise the Lord we want to begin with a word of prayer. Let us bow down for a word of prayer in Jesus name. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your holy name even as we gather today in your presence in this uh, media and in this platform where we are live, King of all glory. We pray that you may come down in your presence and that you may minister to us today in a mighty way. May you minister to us, oh dear Father. Lord, you want to remember all my viewers, wherever they are, Lord, you know where they are coming from. You know the battles they have been fighting, oh God. And you know where they are calling you from, dear Lord. And every situation they are calling you from, dear Father. Desiring in their heart to see your heart. Lord, may you come through for them. May you bring resurrection in their lives, oh God. May you bring peace in their lives, my Father. May you do them good, King of all glory. And may you fill their hearts with the joy. Thank you for you bring their morning, oh God. For weeping may last for a night, but the joy comes in the morning. Cause their morning to come, oh God, so that they may rejoice in you and bless your holy name. For we have prayed, trusting and believing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen.
anoint him with an anointing from above. An anointing that will speak to the situation of your people and our viewers, O oh Lord. May you bless him, Jehovah God, and may you bless your word. Use him as a vessel to the glory and honor of your name. For this we have prayed, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let us welcome the servant of God, Reverend James Kikwa, to bring us the word. Yes. Welcome, sir. Wow. How are you this evening? Good to see that uh, God has given us another opportunity to meet and share in his word even through this media at a time like now we are in this together the situation that we're prevailing in our nation and the nations of the world and we thank god because the gospel still goes on and irrespective of the situation that is there now we want to before I bring the word, I just want to bring two young people so that they may speak to you, uh, a young person who is there, to know that there is still hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and even through his word. Allow me to bring a Victor, a young high school student, even to speak to you young people who are right there at home. You don't know what is going on in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Keep studying and believing in God and keep obeying our parents and doing as they tell us. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Let me allow Gabriel Priest to come and uh, just say a word. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank God for this opportunity and we are welcoming all the young people to be listening to the word. Like today, I encourage you from the book of Job 14 7 that says that there is hope for. A tree, if, uh, a tree if is cut down, it will sprout again. So despite of the circumstances, don't indulge in these things that will destroy your life. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from things that will spoil your spirit. But keep on listening to the word. We bring word every Wednesday and every Sunday. Kindly go to our Facebook page and listen to the word that man of God is bringing. And God will continue giving us hope even as we listen to the word of God through the internet. In Jesus' name be blessed. Amen. 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 Let me ask Gabriel to pray even as I bring the word this evening. Amen. Let's believe. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this evening, God. Thank you for such a Wednesday that you've given us, oh God. As your servant is coming to minister to this world, oh God, we know there are very many people listening through this Facebook, through through YouTube, and every channel that we are using to reach people, God. We pray for them, God, as your servant, Lord, bring the word. We pray that it will, de it will descend into their heart, and I pray that you revealing to those things that are secret, oh God, those that are suffering, we pray that you're going to touch them today. Let the word heal them. Let the word bring hope. Let the one the word revived them in jesus name we pray and believe amen amen thank and you. amen thank you so very much because of tuning in may the lord god bless you those of you who are reasoning through the whatsapp and those of you watching may god bless you i want to bring us the word of the lord according to the conviction of my heart this evening and the word i want us to uh, dwell on is about the covenants of God, the divine covenants of God. Because Jesus, when he died on the cross, one of the things that we are assured that he did, he came to establish a covenant between man and God. And the Bible says clearly in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15, therefore Christ is the mediator of a new covenant that those who are called may receive the promise eternal inheritance now that he has died a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant we i want to make it very clear at a time like now that what little matter in this life is do you have a covenant with the god a covenant with the God mean that you have accepted the, the, the ransom that Jesus 
Christ his son came to establish on the cross. And he became the establisher, the mediator of a new covenant. The word covenant means that you have got a promise. You, have, you are in peace with God. A covenant is what keeps the things of God in this life. God himself says in Psalm 89 verse 34, Psalm 89 verse 34, I will not violate my covenant or alter anything that goes out of my mouth. I will not violate my covenant. My covenant I cannot break. It doesn't matter what is going on in the world today. I will come to you with a very clear message, a very clear conscience in my spirit. There are people who God is watching over. People God will preserve for himself. You remember during the time of the prophet Elijah. Elijah is running away from Jezebel and God comes and gives him a very clear message when he claims that he is the only one remaining because everyone else has been killed. God tells him, I have preserved for myself 7,000 people who have not even bowed to Baal. And that is the way it is. These were 7,000 people who had a covenant with the God. God always watches over his covenant in order to protect it, in order to preserve it, in order to prove it that he is a God of covenant. The same God is the God who made a covenant with Noah during his time that when everyone else and everything else was being destroyed, God preserved Noah because Noah had found favor in the eyes of God. Despite what is going on in the world today, I bring the word to us through Jesus Christ, the blood that he shed on the cross. He has established with us a covenant and he wants every one of us to remember we have a covenant with God. We have a covenant with him and that is the covenant that keeps us strong. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, Isaiah 53 verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was on him, and with his stripes we are healed. Those are our words of covenant. I want to go to very personal study of what I believe Jesus established even through the blood that he shed. Because we know very well when Jesus came and we went to the cross and even when he rose again there is the blood that he shed and according to the study we have we know jesus blood came from seven different places in his body and because every covenant is established through blood and you remember even in the old covenant that every covenant was established through blood and you remember that uh, the priest would go and uh, slaughter, they would slaughter the bull and uh, ram and take the blood into the holy of holies and he would enter there once a year be carrying the blood which was for his own sins and the sins of the people and that is exactly what Jesus did when he was here on earth he goes to Calvary with his own precious blood so that he may establish a covenant between man and God and we know different places where blood came from in his body number one Jesus shed blood when he was in Gethsemane in the book of Luke 22 and verse number 44 Luke 22 verse 44 it is recorded and being in anguish extreme pain or distress of mind he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like the drops of blood falling to the ground. Jesus in Gethsemane. We know very clearly, according to the scripture, that Jesus in Gethsemane, he was praying to God. And he prayed until his sweat became drops of blood. And this is the first blood that Jesus is that is shedding from his body at Gethsemane. And this simply means that the, our thought and our mind, it is cleansed, it is washed 
through the blood that came from his head as droplets of blood from uh, our sweat. It means our mind, our thoughts are cleansed. They, we have a covenant with God that has to do with our mind. It has to do with our thought. It has to do with our ideas. We have a clear mind. We have good ideas. God is the one who gives us good ideas. And the blood that came from the head of Jesus as droplets of blood, it means that our mind and our thoughts are cleansed. It means that we are able to submit and surrender to the will of God. It is at Gethsemane, you remember, where Jesus prayed and said, it is your will. Let your will be done. It's no longer about my will. When we get the uh, when we, we need to come to that place, even at this time that we are in, where we submit our mind, our thought, our ideas, even to having covenant with God. And that is exactly what the word of God is about. Number two, Jesus said, shed his blood at the whipping post, at the whipping post. It is recorded in Matthew 27, verse number 26. Matthew 27, verse 26, I read from the NLT Bible. It is says, so Pilate released Barnabas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a reed-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. At the whipping post, we know very well that this is where Jesus' body was proud. Now, according to the whip they are talking about, it was called the reed-tipped whip. The reed tipped whip, it was a whip which had 17 different headings and these diff 17 different headings at the end were tied to metal of red, lead metal or at times pieces of sharp bones and 17 of them and they would whip someone and the 17 straps would, and all the red metals would, 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 be, would be held by the skin in the body. And then they would prow from the body and the, the different straps would get out the meat and the flesh and blood would come out from the entire body of the person that is being whipped. And that is exactly what they did to Jesus Christ. In fact, this is what is recorded in Psalm 129 verse number 3. Psalm 129 verse 3. The prowess proud upon my back. Isaiah 50 verse 6. Isaiah 50 verse 6. I gave my back to the cemeters and my cheeks to them that pracked of my hair. Now, this, uh, the, this whip, again it had another, and it was called the cut of nine tails. The cut of nine tails. It was the whip that was used even to frog Jesus Christ. And blood came from all over his body at the whipping post. And we who have seen the passion of Christ as a as a film and as a movie, we know very well. They did not only frog him at the back, they frogged him from every part of his body, including the chest, including the stomach, and blood came out. And in fact, what they used to do, the test, the, 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 the uh, judgment was for the, the highest level of judgment was for a person to be frogged or whipped to receive 40 strokes, 40 strokes. But out of experience, they knew anybody who received the 40 strokes, the 40th one, they would always die. So what happened to Jesus, they gave him 40 minus 1 because it was proved that when someone is given 40 strokes minus 1 then they would at least live and that is what they did to Jesus Christ. They gave him 39 that means 40 minus 1 and we know very well that this blood that he was that came from his body it is recorded it, 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 it healed us from our our sins, from our transgressions, from our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And this is the blood that gives us assurance. It gives us assurance that our diseases, our sicknesses, 
are healed. We are healed from our iniquity and are that which goes with it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, we know Jesus who breathed internally internally from his body organs and out of this blood that came from his internal breathing we know very well according to the scripture again Matthew 27 verse 26 Matthew 27 it is talks about our forgiveness our forgiveness he breathed from his inner being the blood that came from inside it heals us from our our sorrow our grief the Bible says, surely he has borne our grief. He has sown, borne our sorrow, son of sorrow. And he, he heals the brokenhearted. The blood that came from his inside, inside, inside his body. It heals us in, 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 eternally, eternally. You don't have to remain in pain. You are wounded in your spirit. You have sorrow and grief. This is the blood that gives us assurance of having a covenant with God through our inner being. That's why he says, come to me, all ye that are troubled, troubled in your heart. He remember he spoke in the temple, the anointing is upon me for he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted and all that kind of a thing. It is about the blood that came from internally, internally from his body organs. And then number four, we have the blood that came from his head when they put the crown of thorns on him. And this is the blood according to the scripture, Matthew 27 and 29, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. We know the blood that came from his head. Number one, it cleanses, it gives us peace of mind. It gives us uh, free from torment in our mind. Peace of mind, mental torment. And then on top of that, the blood that came from his head, it heals us from all manner of curses. Because you remember those were a sign of a curse which God had spoken to Adam. And as a result of these loans and the blood that came from his head, it gives us mental peace. It gives us free from mental torment. It gives us peace of mind. And above all, it delivers us from every manner of curses because those were a sign of curse. And then we have number five. They piously his hands when they build, they 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 pierce his hands with the nails. And according to Matthew 27 verse 35, the power it gives us the blood that came from his hands. It gives us the power to succeed, the power to prosper, the ability to receive spiritual inheritance. Our hands are about receiving. By the blood that came from his hands, we know the work of our hands, it is blessed. It gives us the power to succeed. It makes us to prosper. It gives us assurance of faith that whatever we touch with our hands, it is shall and it is meant to prosper. And we have a covenant with the God that the work of our hands is blessed because among the praises that Jesus shed his blood, it is from his hands. And then we have the blood that comes from his side from his feet when they put nails on his feet this talks about the dominion it talks about authority it talks about our walk wherever we walk wherever you go remember god already had spoken to joshua he told him wherever your feet shall step upon i have given you and that is the same promise we have as the church and as believers by the blood that came from the feet of jesus we have dominion we have authority from our walk and wherever we go we possess because we have a covenant with God through the blood of Jesus that came from his feet and then we have finally number seven the blood that came from inside they pious inside you remember that uh, when Jesus is on the cross many times they would uh, they would for the person to die they would come and break their legs and that is what happened when they came they found that the thieves that were on the side were dead but for Jesus they did not break his legs because it was prophesied that uh, his, nobody would break his bones they would break the bones in order for the victim to die faster but for Jesus they took 
took a spear and they passed his side. And it is recorded in the Bible, John 19, 34. John 19, verse 34. Instead of one of the soldiers, they passed Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. We know this is the blood that came from inside. It fell and entered into the levers and the rain that fell and the earthquake. And this is the blood that saves and heals nations. And we have assurance of salvation through the blood that came from the side of the ribs of Jesus Christ. Not only that, the blood that came from the ribs of Jesus, we know it heals our families. Because you remember God had formed a woman out of the limb of man and so our families our relationships our marriages our homes can have peace we have a covenant of uh, through the blood of jesus that has to do with the blood that came from his side it talks about the wholeness of her the fullness of joy and deals with our family matters so you understand that the different praises where the blood came from in the body of jesus christ and it represent the wholeness of the covenant that we have with the god because where there is no shedding of blood there is no covenant and i come to you right now in the situation we are in as a nation and the nations of the world there are a people who are supposed to have confidence in their god when we know what jesus accomplished through his blood then it will give us peace it will give us rest it will give us assurance it will give us confidence to know that the devil can do nothing against us the area people will be troubled all over but for us that believe in god through our lord jesus christ we need to understand we are children of covenant we have covenant with the god and that covenant it touches almost every sphere of our life once again the blood that he shed at gethsemane it deals with our mind our Lord surrender to the will of God and then that the whipping post the when they 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 whipped his back and proud him and removed every flesh from his body it healed our transgressions our iniquities and brought us peace and it healed all our sicknesses it healed our body and then we have the blood that came from it of breathing it makes us to have inner healing we have inner peace from every sorrow of heart from every grief from every pain you don't have to live in unforgiveness because the blood that came from the internal breathing of jesus it makes us able to forgive that is how he was able to tell the father father forgive them for they know not what we do and as a result today we can forgive those who hurt us because jesus suffer from the internally so that he can deal with our internal internal beings in the name of jesus and then we have the crown of thorns which cleanses our mind it cleanses our us from mental torture you do not have to have sleepless night out of dreams migraine headaches out of dreams that you cannot explain because your mind is at peace not only that no curses can operate in your life you are protected from curses of every manner as a result of the blood that came from the head of jesus when they laid a crown of thorns upon him not only that through his hands we are assured that the blood that came from his hands the work of our hands is blessed we are meant to succeed we are meant to prosper our ability to receive an inheritance your hands are blessed to receive and not only just to receive but also to give because this comes through our hands and then the feet talks of dominion and it talks of authority and then the side it deals with the blood that came from his side when they pass it deals with your salvation and it deals with the our wholeness of heart, our families, our husbands, our wives, our children. And this is the covenant that we have. And as a result, fear not. You can operate in such a season with assurance that you have a covenant with God. Once again, God himself says, I 
will not violate my covenant or alter the words that goes out of my mouth. God cannot, and I repeat, God cannot violate his covenant. If we are the children of covenant, then I assure you that covenant will preserve us at a time like now. The question is, do you have a covenant with God? If you do not know Jesus Christ, you can establish a covenant with him by receiving him as Lord and Savior into your life. Just pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Write my name in the book of life and make me to have fellowship with the Father. Establish a new covenant with me. For I come to you holy, believing that you are the Savior and you died for me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and establishing a covenant with me this evening. In Jesus' name, I'm now saved. Amen and amen. Father, thank you because of every person that prayed this prayer. May you establish a covenant with them so that through this covenant, it may keep them and help them to overcome even at a time like now. I pray for the body of Jesus Christ, the believers who are watching me right now, wherever they are. May you preserve them by the power of your covenant because you are a keep covenant keeping God. No evil shall befall us because we are the children of the covenant. By the covenant of your blood, we decree it is well with us. It is well with our bodies. It is well with our health. It is with our, with our children. It is well with, our, uh, with the body of Jesus. And it is well with every person listening to me. Preserve us by your covenant. Keep us by your covenant. Protect us by your covenant. When we go to bed, we are protected by your covenant. When we rise up from our sleep, we are protected by the covenant. When we eat our food, wherever we go, the covenant of blood, the covenant of the blood is speaking for us in the name of Jesus and we declare the covenant we have with the Father cannot be broken and therefore it is well with our life. For this we pray and we declare the same in Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen. The Lord God bless you in Jesus mighty holy name even as he keep you in Jesus name. Amen. Our dear viewers, thank you for having tuned in to our service today uh, on, our, on our live recording on Facebook. Uh, I want to encourage all of you who have tuned in, share this message. It might be encouraging to somebody, your neighbor, your family friend, your, your environment. Just share this message and God will, be, will bless you. I want to, uh, to the viewers uh, from the House of Worship and Healing, Deliverance Church, Dagoretti Junction, I want to thank you also for co your continued support, even in your offerings, and I pray that you may continue uh, uh, to, to offer your, your offerings, and uh, the, the, the pay bill is on your screen, please uh, continue to support the ministry work as we continue to serve our God. To the other members from other churches, please continue to support your church from wherever you are. Just uh, give your offerings to the church where you are coming from. Support your pastor. God will bless you. It's also important to mention to you that at the House of Worship and Healing, we have We Care Desk. If you are a member or you come from any other church, you can visit us at our office if you feel like supporting a needy family, someone needy. You can bring your, 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 your offerings at our church office and God will bless you. Thank you.